Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on Umbrella. Last time we have covered Umbrella's special moves and blockbusters, followed with a gameplay guide for beginners. Now for this video, we are covering her variants starting with the bronze up till the diamond. Bronze variants are typically very weak stat-wise, and they have very simple signature abilities for beginners to pick up easily. You don't really expect them to be very good or even meta-dominant, and that is mostly true up till today. As a general rule, bronze variants exist to help newer players get into the game, and so it is absolutely normal for them to fall off later in the late stages of the game. They will usually lose against diamond tier defenders, and now, while there are some bronze variants that really stands out and can hold itself well even in the late game, these variants are pretty much the exception and not the rule. It usually takes a very powerful signature ability to carry them through the late game and overcome their weak stat distribution. In terms of the bronze umbrellas, they are both simply average and will no doubt fall off in the late game. We'll first start with Salty. Salty has access to Enrage and Bleed, which together makes her a pretty strong offensive variant. However, the Enrage is locked under a health threshold, and while she does have blessings to help, you generally want to stay healthy throughout the fight. Umbrella does have plenty of ways to regain health, but I dislike the fact that you purposely need to be in low health to get those Enrage stacks. The good thing is that you can inflict Bleed by gaining Enrage through other means such as Rerun as a support. By that point, however, it feels like you're going through a lot of hoops and bringing in a lot of different variants just to make a bronze variant good. She tries to be a bleeder but falls short against Bad Hair Day, she tries to hit hard from Enrage, but is nothing compared to Sheltered. Overall, Salty is just okay. Then we have Fresh Air, which is a control variant. Her ability to inflict Disable Blockbuster is quite good and very easy to accomplish through a dash attack. Once you defeat an opponent while their blockbusters are disabled, you gain some free meter to start spamming blockbusters. This is decent. However, controlling the opponent's meter doesn't really win you games, it only prevents you from losing. You will have to rely on Umbrella's kit to really deal any damage. And since you need to defeat an opponent to unlock that second signature ability, Fresh Air is definitely going to struggle against the tougher diamond variants in late game. Nice meter control variant for early game but will no doubt fall off in the later stages. Overall, it's just fine. Coming up next is the Silver Variants, and they are usually the fun group of the bunch. They typically have stronger stats and abilities and have a higher chance to be good, but might require a more specific kind of playstyle, moveset, or support to actually work well in late game. Umbrella Silver Variants are no different. While that specific playstyle or moveset are still largely not known, most of our Silver Variants are definitely on the fun spectrum. First up, we have Rose Tinted, a fire support variant that gives her teammates Barrier and Thorns. Furthermore, she also clears the opponent's debuff, so those combination of abilities makes her a pretty strong support in the bench. Obviously, this is best used defensively, but Silver variants often have too little HP to be of any good in defense for late game. And at 50k, this is fine but not enough. She's still quite decent in early game, I suppose, and there might be some interaction that might not be super obvious right now, but overall, she's a fine support, but I still think Killjoy is so much better. Next is Puddle Pirate, Umbrella's only buff control variant. Now, buff control is something that Umbrella lacks. She does have slime, which is not the same as a direct buff removal or buff prevention. Furthermore, Puddle Pirate gains some health regeneration when the opponent loses a buff. Health regeneration is quite a big part of Umbrella's kit, so you might not even need this ability at all. The first ability to remove the buff is definitely the highlight here. My only problem with Puddle Pirate is her attack stat. 9.6k is fine, but definitely not enough for the late game, and she has no other way to gain any attack boosting stats. 
Armor Break is a part of Umbrella's kit, so there is some damage boost there. And if you manage to kill an opponent, Umbrella's marquee ability does provide some free enrage stacks for a while. So overall, it's a fine silver variant that will probably struggle in late game, but in early to mid game, she'll be a good carry for you. Then we have Candy Crusher, and this is one of the fun variants in my opinion. Candy Crusher wants to say an overstuffed, which is easily accomplished by equipping Feeding Time, Tongue Twister, and Salt Grinder. She can gain tons of regen, which might be redundant given Umbrella's health regeneration in her kit, but the main thing to take away from this ability is that Permanent Haste. Once Permanent Haste is obtained, you can easily start spamming Feeding Time with Umbrella's high combo count. She suffers from a similar problem to Puddle Pirate, with her not good enough attack stat for late game, but at least she can spam Tongue Twisters and Feeding Time quite reliably to make up for that. Overall, she's a variant that will probably struggle in late game as well, but spamming blockbusters with powerful effects do seem like a good deal regardless. I personally really like this variant, but don't count your hopes up too much. Finally in the silver tier we have Wild Child. Wild Child is probably my favorite silver umbrella, but it's not because of her abilities. Wild Child has a very respectable attack stat at 11k, which is quite good for a silver and allows her to deal some good damage in late game. This is by no means enough and I wish she had some extra bonus damage from her abilities. Unfortunately, her abilities do not provide anything new from other umbrella variants. Slime is a major debuff that can be easily inflicted by all Umbrella variants through her moves. Furthermore, health regeneration is also a big part of Umbrella's kit so this might be redundant. She does have the flexibility of using whatever move you want without sacrificing the health regeneration and slime from her abilities. However, I do believe that some of her best blockbusters and special moves are those that provide health regeneration and slime. So that's the conundrum here. Overall, Wild Child is fine. If you're using the recommended moveset from my gameplay guide, Wild Child will act as if she doesn't have any ability, but her attack stat is pretty good. Gold variants are where things start to get serious. A lot of gold variants are great and most are often viable in late game just from their stats alone. Their abilities, however, is the one that separates the good golds with the truly amazing ones. I do think that none of Umbrella's gold variants are bad. All of them have their use and can do some really good damage with their abilities and kit, so you can't really go wrong with any of these. We'll start first with Space Case, a variant with a lot of things going for her. Her first ability inflicts Doom when the opponent gets below 50% health. That is a very powerful ability and getting to Ravenous is not hard at all. An attack stat of 11k makes it quite easy to reach that health threshold, so this should not be a problem either. Possibly one of the strongest Umbrella variants in the game. Her second ability gives her plenty of buffs when she kills an opponent. Precision is a powerful buff, but a condition of 3 stacks is quite difficult to fully make use of this. Slurp and Slide is probably your best bet to deal tons of damage and defeat an opponent like Immortal Fiber while ignoring her abilities in one hit. The other buffs depend on the opponent's element, but most of these are defensive buffs so you probably won't care too much about them anyway. The notable ones is really only Enrage, which will give you plenty of power to snowball the fight and defeat the next opponent faster. But Fire Defenders are quite rare, so there's that. Overall, a solid Umbrella variant with a powerful debuff in her kit. Next is Tile Traveler, the only Umbrella variant with access to immunity. Her attack stat is only 10k, so she needs a bit of help, which she easily gets from her second signature ability. Now, you can easily inflict Armor Break with Slurp and Slide, so you might not even need this ability. The 50% bubble attack damage is quite nice, but I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. More damage with Bubbling Bubble, I guess. Immunity is definitely a powerful buff, but having to be near one can be quite challenging, especially when puddles can easily disappear through combo change. 
This is not the same as Tears for Parasol. Tidal Traveler might have some use in Rift thanks to immunity, but I think Parasol's variance is still probably the better choice to use due to on-demand immunity and precision. Overall, Tidal Traveler deals good damage as a gold, just like most gold variants, but by no means is she anything special when compared to other non-Umbrella gold variants. Finally, we have Wonderkind, the oddest of the bunch. Unlike the rest, Wonderkind focuses primarily on the Power Surge debuff, which makes Projection Lens a big staple for her abilities. Once you stack up 3 Power Surges on the opponent, they lose meter and is damaged by Wonderkind's attack, which caps at almost 13k. This is the highest attack stat of all the other Gold Umbrella variants, which already makes her very good at dealing damage to tough opponents. Given Umbrella's relatively high hit count, the blockbuster meter reduction is also a nice touch to save yourself. Overall, I didn't like Wonderkind at first, but she has definitely grown on me. She don't really have a whole lot of utility, but it's just pure damage which works well in her favor. I'd say she's pretty solid. Diamond variants are the most coveted of them all. Diamond variants have the highest chances of being meta relevant and even if they are not, they will surely hit super hard in prize fights and can easily win you fights. Most diamond variants will work well in high prize fight streaks and I'd recommend to invest in them to carry you throughout the game faster. Note that I did not mention rift battles because that is a whole other topic of discussion. Hitting hard is simply not enough in rift battles but in prize fights, a lot of things are more viable. Like most other characters, Umbrella's diamond variance comes down to an offensive and defensive one. We'll first start with Eager Deceiver, a neutral diamond variant with a pretty high attack stat at 13k. In diamond standards, however, this is not really impressive as some diamonds can go up to 15k in attack. However, her abilities makes it possible for her to gain permanent and rage stacks, which significantly increases her damage output, making her one of the hardest hitting variants in the game. She gains these enraged stacks by converting 3 of the buffs she has. She can gain these buffs from her first signature ability through a well-timed block. I want to note that these buffs have no timer. Blessings, barrier, and precision with no timer is pretty insane. So not only can she hit hard and destroy teams, she also has an inbuilt safety nade from the blessings and barrier. Overall, Eager Deceiver is a very powerful variant for prize fights. She's similar to Jen Frizz, which is also a very strong variant in this game as well. Finally, we come to the last of Umbrella's variant and possibly the only variant that could be meta. Raining Champ is a light-based defensive support variant. She gives her teammates haste and final stand, which is pretty annoying to deal with. If she's the first one in the match, she has unflinching and two stacks of permanent armor, making her slightly more difficult to kill off without first killing her teammates. So you're left with two choices. Either try to kill her first to prevent her buffs, or kill her teammates while avoiding a level 3 blockbuster, charge through haste. I honestly don't know how good she will be in defense, but as a light variant, she immediately already has synergy in rift battles with light catalyst, and that is one of the top meta defender teams in this game. I do have to say that with 68k health and 2 stacks of permanent armor, this is very similar to dealing with mod leader with blue shift active. Now obviously, there's no auto block here, so mod leader is still the better defender in my opinion. We'll have to see how reigning champ performs, but I've got a feeling that she's going to be dangerous to face against especially with Tongue Twister and a variety of bubbled projectiles in Umbrella's kit. Alright everyone, so that is my review on all Umbrella's variants in this game. Overall, there's a few fun variants here and there, but the highlight is definitely on the golds and diamonds. If you're looking to invest in the long run, don't bother with the silvers or bronzes because they will fall off later in the late game. Maybe there's a few silvers that might stand out, but that will remain to be seen. 
and there is absolutely nothing wrong because most silvers and bronzes do fall off in this game. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if there's anything that I missed in the comments down below. And with that, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a great day ahead and I'll see you in the next and final video just to wrap everything up.